I'm Tori Mishashik, a first year osteopathic medical student at Rocky Vista University in Montana. And today we're gonna to talk about MCAT study timelines and tips and tricks for those getting prepared to take their MCAT exam. Make sure you like and subscribe to find out more details. The first step to determining when to take your MCAT and determine your study timeline is to find out when you wanna take your exam. So do you wanna apply in this cycle or the following fall cycle? All of those decisions are gonna impact your study timeline. So if I wanted to apply this coming cycle, I would take my MCAT this fall and create my study timeline around then. So whether that's three months or six months, I can kind of determine my timeline based on the date of the exam schedule. So you picked a desk date for your MCAT, what's next? My first step would be to take a diagnostic exam. You can usually find these diagnostic exams on any kind of study resource or online or just by Googling MCAT diagnostic exam. And it'll take you to a page that's about a half length true MCAT. It'll give you all of the sections, CAR, Psych, Soch, Bio, Biochem, all of the things you'll need. And you'll take a half length exam to determine your baseline. And then from that baseline, you can determine how long your study schedule needs to be and how in depth you need to go on certain topics. So determining how long you wanna study for your MCAT can be a really difficult thing because you don't wanna to study too long that you burn out, but you wanna give yourself adequate time to do well on the test because it is pretty high stakes. My biggest piece of advice is to find a schedule that works well with everything going on in your life. Are you a full-time student? Are you a part-time student? Are you a parent? Do you depend on others or are others dependent on you in any capacity? Do you have a full-time job or a part-time job? There are a lot of things that influence the way we study and how many hours a week we can study. I would say the basic study plan or basic most common one is about three to six months, but again, that varies for every student depending on where you're at in life and each study timeline is perfectly adequate for the person that chooses it. An example of a three month study schedule would be taking that diagnostic exam right at the beginning and getting your results back. Once I got my results back, I would dive in, look at all of the sections and see which ones I performed well in and which ones I really need work in. For me, CARS was really stood out to me that I needed a lot of work because I hadn't seen any passages or dove into any passages like that in my undergrad curriculum. Look at the hardest topics first. See what you're really struggling on first and hit those running right away. So whether that first month it's really diving deep on those biology sections you don't know um, too much about or cars, paragraphs, and just hitting those every day. Hit the hard topics first and then review the stuff that you have a good grasp on a little bit later in your study schedule. Along with this schedule, I would make sure to implement at least two full length practice exams in your study timeline. These are really great tools to gauge where you're at for test day coming up. I would recommend placing the full length exams definitely about a month in once you've hit all those hard topics and really gotten a good grasp on everything. Take that, really see where you're sitting. It's gonna be a little bit difficult because more than likely you've never sat for that long of an exam before. Eight hours is a lot, those topics are really heavy. So getting a good grasp on how you performed on that one will really set up the rest of your study timeline. After that full length, you'll go ahead and dive into those weaker areas and really cement those down. And then you'll take another one, I would say around the two to beginning of the third month, and then really dive into that last one and see, did I improve my weak areas from exam two? Do I have new weak areas or am I sitting at a pretty good pace? If you want to, and if you have time permitting, I would take a third one, maybe a week, two weeks before your actual exam date, just to make sure that you're on par with where you wanna be at for your exam date. And if you're not, there's always the option of rescheduling or canceling your exam if you feel like you need more time. So while you wanna aim high for that third and final exam before your true MCAT, I think you need to take the score with a grain of salt because it could be a little bit lower than how you're going to perform whether or not you got different types of topics on the MCAT say you have a lot of chemistry but on your practice exam you had a lot of physics or kind of vice versa within the within the different sections so I definitely would say take your score that you get on that third and final practice exam and take it with a grain of salt a few up or down points but that's really where you're going to be about baseline and whether or not you fluctuate one or two points up or down is is really minimal. So a normal daily study schedule for someone who would be in class full time like I am right now would be getting up, doing all of your coursework during the day and making sure that you're completing all of your necessary coursework that you have for the institution you're within, whether that's undergrad, a master's degree, whatever kind of post back or classes you're taking, make sure you get all of your necessary duties out of the way first. Then I would take a small break, 
kind of decompress from the daily activities and then hit my studying for my MCAT topics. Whether that's an hour every night or two hours every other night, it's really important to get about six to 12 hours of studying in every week, especially if you're going for a shorter study timeline. Every night is a little bit better than multiple hours per week because there's some nights where you can fit an hour in, but then there's other nights where you can't fit two hours in. So I think staying to shorter study timelines and shorter days is a little bit better to handle, especially if you have a really large class load or homework load on top of that. Now, if you were working full time, which I did take the MCAT while I was working full time as well, what I would do is I would get up, go to my job all day. And when I had downtime during my job, whether that was my lunch break, my regular breaks, or like my commute to and from work, I would listen to an MCAT podcast or some kind of study podcast to really help me understand the types of questions they were gonna ask me, how to break down complex questions, how to eliminate questions that you know are wrong right off the bat. I think those were great resources for me while I was studying full time because it allowed me to do my work, but it also allowed me to study and get more study time in during the day. Another good thing is to take a break after work and then once again, go back into that one to two hours every day or every other day, just to make sure you're staying on a routine and staying on track for study. I would say a good time to really look in to see if you're struggling and on pace with where you want to be at for your MCAT is after that second practice exam. I think that's why I say that you should take it at the end of the second month or early third month. That way you give yourself enough time that if you need to push back your test date, you can without any repercussions. So I think the end of the second month, early third is when you really look at your scores look at your topic comprehension and say, do I understand this or do I need more time? From there, that's when you would make that individual decision to either push your MCAT back or keep going as is. There are some people that prefer to just keep their original MCAT and not push it off because they don't think that they'll either improve or you know it gives you more downtime in your studying. But if you really think you're struggling, it's never a bad idea to push the MCAT back and really hit the books and really understand the material because they would rather see you take the MCAT once and do well than multiple times in a short period of time with repeats. In your final week of prep for your MCAT, I would definitely be solidifying the topics that you have consistently struggled with. Making sure that those are locked down and you understand the basic general concepts of those topics, whether that's regular biology questions or principles of biochemistry, like any kind of regulatory pathways, those come back in so many different forms on the MCAT in so many different areas that understanding general concepts is such a key and critical thing to understand the MCAT. You've got your basic science knowledge down is really important and then you can go back and refine the little tweaks that you needed to make. Like, oh, you forgot a psychology component that you hadn't looked at for a couple months. Like, that's okay, but I think making sure you get those those main topics down is really important. And also preparing for your test day is also super important for that last week. Don't spend a ton of hours studying. Make sure you're doing a little bit of review here and there, whether it's flashcards or a podcast, but really give yourself some time to breathe and relax and get your study strategies and your MCAT day strategy really down. Practice waking up on time for the MCAT. Practice timing yourself, you know, doing things around, throughout the day. Practice, you know, what you're gonna do when you take your breaks. Are you gonna sit there? Are you gonna contemplate? I mean, these are all things that I didn't think about when I took my MCAT and I flew through it without any breaks and I 100% regretted it after the fact. So I think getting up, getting a good nutritious breakfast and really kind of practicing what you're gonna do on test day is really gonna make you more comfortable within the test setting and also just give you a little more relaxation and ease of mind as you approach your test day. I think the biggest thing to take away is that if you make your timeline, it is 100% okay to have to change your timeline. I made a timeline for six months and I started out really well, studying every single day, doing what I needed to do, and then school just got so stressful, chaotic, last semester of undergrad, and I had to really take a step back for a little bit and then totally rearrange my study plan. I stuck to my original date because I had given myself so long to study, but I really think I could have used my study time a lot more effectively had I not absolutely tried to burn myself out within the first month and a half of studying. So I think understanding that you are allowed to reschedule your MCAT as well, along with restructure your study plan, because your life is very different than everybody else's. It's definitely tailored to what you need and what you feel is best for you. So definitely don't compare your study timeline to anybody else's timeline. It is very much for you and only for you and your score is your score, not anybody else's. So don't compare your scores 
or your timeline to anybody else's because your journey to taking your MCAT and getting there is very different from everybody else's. Thank you so much for watching this video on MCAT timeline tips and tricks. Make sure to drop a comment, let us know when you're taking your MCAT, and we'll see you in the next video.